we take a break uh, today from our Lord's Day series to look at two related memorials. Uh, today is the memorial of St. Monica, who is the mother of St. Augustine, whose memorial we celebrate tomorrow. And so we're going to kind of look at just uh, about their life, and we're going to take that uh, information from franciscanmedia.org. Almost all that we know about St. Monica is from St. Augustine's writings, especially his book, Confessions. And the circumstances of St. Monica's life could have made her a nagging wife, a bitter daughter-in-law, and a despairing parent. Yet, she did not give way to any of these temptations. Although she was a Christian, her parents gave her in marriage to a pagan, Patricius, who lived in her hometown of Tagus, in North Africa. Patricius had some redeeming features, but he also had a violent temper and was licentious. Monica also had to bear with a cantankerous mother-in-law who lived in her home. Patricius criticized his wife because of her charity and piety, but he always respected her. Monica's prayers and example finally won her husband and mother-in-law to Christianity. Her husband died in 371 AD, a year after his baptism. Monica had at least three children who survived in infancy. Augustine was the oldest and the most famous. At the time of his father's death, Augustine was 17 and was a rhetoric student in Carthage. Monica was distressed to learn that her son had accepted the Manichaean heresy that all flesh is evil, and was living an immoral life. For a while, she refused to let him eat or sleep in her house. Then one night she had a vision that assured her Augustine would return to the faith. From that time on, she stayed close to her son, praying and fasting for him. In fact, she often stayed much closer than Augustine would have wanted, you can imagine, of a man that age. When he was 29, Augustine decided to go to Rome to teach rhetoric. Monica was determined to go along. One night, he told his mother he was going to the dock to say goodbye to a friend. Instead, he set sail for Rome. Monica was heartbroken when she learned of Augustine's trick. But she still followed him. She arrived in Rome only to find that he had left for Milan. Although travel was difficult, Monica pursued him to Milan. In Milan, Augustine came under the influence of the bishop, St. Ambrose. St. Ambrose also became Monica's spiritual director. She accepted his advice in everything and had the humility to give up some practices that had become second nature to her. Monica became the leader of, a devout, uh, of devout women in Milan, as she had been in Tagest. She continued her prayers for Augustine during his years of instruction. And in Easter 387, St. Ambrose baptized Augustine and several of his friends. Soon after, his party left for Africa. Although no one else was aware of it, Monica knew at that time her life was near the end. She told Augustine, Son, nothing in this world now affords me delight. I do not know what there is now left for me to do or why I am still here, all my hopes in this world being now fulfilled. She became ill shortly after and suffered severely for nine days before her death. St. Monica is the patron saint of alcoholics, of conversion, of married women, and of mothers. So we heard a little bit about Augustine before he was baptized. So he became a Christian at 33 he went on to become a priest at the age of 36 and a bishop at the age of 41. And so, I mean, most people are familiar with this sinner to saint transformation that happened with him. But, you know, getting to know a little bit more about him is a rewarding experience. You know, we saw kind of early in his life that, you know, he has this zeal, this intensity that he lived his life, both before he was uh, baptized and after. And so that was whether his path led away from or toward God. The tears of his mother, the instruction of St. Ambrose, and most of all, God himself speaking to him in the scriptures, redirected him. 
he, it basically redirected him from a love of life to a life of love. Having been so immer uh, deeply immersed in creature pride of life in its early days, and having you know, drunk deeply of its bitter dregs, it's not surprising, again, with that zeal, that he turned with a holy fierceness against the many demon thrusts rampant in his day. His times were truly decadent, both politically, socially, and also morally. He was both feared and loved, like the master. The perennial criticism leveled against him, a, a fundamental rigorism that he had. In his day, Augustine providentially fulfilled the office of prophet. He was like Jeremiah and other greats and was hard pressed, but he could not keep quiet. I say to myself, we hear in Jeremiah, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more, but then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. We hear that in Jeremiah 20, verse 9. St. Augustine is the patron saint of printers and of theologians.